Oh, the approval, you've come in. How are Thank you? you. All right, Copper Fam, we are here with our very special chill edition with the man himself. You've probably seen him on the news and the newspapers, potentially our next Prime Minister, um, touch wood, from my end. But this is Jeremy Corbyn, Jezza. Can we get a round of applause for Jeremy Corbyn, please? How are you? What brings you here to the Hackney Marshes today? This is the lung of London that survived the developers, mainly because it got flooded so much, and that's why it's here. <laughs> this, when I first came to London, this used to be all fairly industrial and fairly grimy around here, but Hackney Marshes was that lung, that lung for people to play football and dream. And if, I don't know if you've ever seen it, there's pictures of sort of 1930s, where there'd be like 50 or 60 football matches going yeah. on, as far as the eye could see. We have an audience called a Copper Fam, and uh, I sent out a tweet asking for questions. It was probably the most popular chill that we've had and loads and loads of questions have come in and of course a lot about your campaigning around football um, and Christian Hennage says unlike your rivals you've had very prominent policies regarding money in grassroots football. What made you take that decision? I love football. I love um sport as a whole. I'm not brilliantly sporty, but I love it and I love watching it. I'll and and uh, <laughs> we'll go jogging together, okay? <laughs> and um, I just think we've got to nurture the grassroots of football because the lesson for children of being out, we're able to go out and play, get muddy, win, lose, draw, whatever, is such a good thing for their character and so important. And I'm, I really admire these sort of amateur coaches all over the country, people that give up a vast amount of their time, they don't get anything for it, running amateur football clubs, amateur athletics clubs and so on, mm. because they believe in it and, they're good for, and it's good for the kids. And so what we're going to do is take a bit of money off the Premiership clubs and put it here. I believe it was 5% of uh, all TV right profits yeah. would go to, to grassroots football. So. Independently spent, because what we don't want is just Premiership clubs having all the money and controlling where it goes into the grassroots. Yeah, I mean, this leads us to, to our next question, actually. Um, we have seen you in a Clapton. Uh, T-shirt, yes. a very, very infamous club in London. And you know, why are non-league and fan-owned clubs so important? Well, we live in a democracy, and democracy should apply in lots of things, and it should also apply in what we do. So you think about football clubs. Mm. Who actually pays for the football club? It's basically us when we go to a match, <laughs> us when we buy our season tickets, us when we buy TV package, Sky, Virgin, or whatever, happens to be, or BT. That's what's really important about it. Let's go into a bit more, a bit more fun in football in general, because I know you've, this campaign, you've been very serious and you've spoken many, many issues. Um, I need to ask it. Go I on, Poet. Go you, on. You, you arguing about who's asking the questions. Well, it's, not, it's, not, it's more to do with the fan well, discussion. Teamwork. <laughs> teamwork. This is the best partnership you've ever yeah. found. Get us on your team, mate, I'm telling you. Do you know what? Because okay. this one means a lot to me. And Finding out you was an Arsenal fan was fantastic news for myself. But then it poses the question that we ask every Arsenal fan that Zach wants to know. Cor Corbin, are you Wenger in or Wenger out? Wenger in. All right, I really want to know why now. Well, Wenger came to the club yeah. in 1996. Oh, and he wasn't particularly well known. He managed Grandpa's 8 before. Arsenal recruited him the year before and said, will you come and manage Arsenal? What an amazing opportunity for any manager anywhere in the world. Of course. And do you know what he said? Yes, but I must finish my contract with Grandpa's Eight first. He said, I've, told, I've given them my word I would stay till the end of the season, and he did. Bruce Rioch was the Arsenal manager at the time, then he came. A few months later, we're, my, me and my boys and some other kids, I take them to the park, they've been doing football in the park, and we're going home, and Arsene Wenger is walking to the stadium carrying a box. What? Yes, this was a while back, and they said, look, Arsene Wenger, Arsene Wenger. And so we stopped, and he put the box down, and he just chatted to them about football. This is a man who's human. And I think you've got to add up his achievements. The league wins, the cup wins, the, until this, some 20 years in the Champions League, I think he's a guy that's brought the club forward to a world status, and we should recognise that. And I get really fed up with these people. Arsenal can see the corner in the first five minutes of a game, and somebody says, Wenger out, Wenger out. Hang on a minute. It's a corner, it's five minutes into the game. Get over it. I think it leads us perfectly. Are you, are you, I guess uh, from your expression, I'm thinking you're possibly not. I'm just at a point in my life where I feel <clears> like <throat> when you've done all you can do in the situation, just in life, I feel like you should gracefully walk away. I don't agree with all the banners and all the abuse. I think there's a nice way to go about it, but I feel like you should find the compromise and say, by the end of the season, 
Let's bring you some fresh ideas and a fresh approach. Let him make the decision. To Respect. be fair, I don't have a choice, Jeremy. I wish I did. <laughs> Lorenzo's real world. Poet, I'll let you ask this one as well, as it is Arsenal related. Well, well you're not an Arsenal supporter. I'm a Liverpool fan. Renzo wants to know if you don't win the election, would you consider replacing Wenger as the next Arsenal manager? You can have me as your assistant. Vuj can come into the physio and dietary. I don't normally bring my family into politics, but I have got a, a football coach son, so maybe we could do a job share. Uh, this one here, though, from uh, Tom Dean says, what do you think about his banner on the cop? Because you're definitely infiltrating football oh, brands. Oh, yeah. yeah. You've seen the banner. It's amazing. Absolutely, ama ama like it? absolutely amazing, yeah. Well, how does it feel for you to kind of see people supporting you en masse in... in in such surroundings, you know, football, we all love football and your face to be on, on the TV everywhere and people love you. I went to We're All Live, which is a music festival at Tranmere Rovers. Nobody knew I was coming and I appear on the stage and start making my speech about football culture and about music culture and, and so on. And people started chanting, and you must know this yourselves, when you're on the stage you can't actually hear mm. everything that's going on in, in the, you know this, don't you? And then I'm looking at these guys chanting and realise they're smiling. <laughs> so I paused and realised what they were chanting. It was, I was quite moved actually. Jason says, would the Labour victory be a bigger comeback than Istanbul? Because right now it feels like extra time. Dudex made that save. We are coming up towards the 84th minute. We've got six okay, minutes to, to go. Six minutes to go. Six minutes to go. We're not ahead. We're not even totally level, okay. but we've got this massive bank of supporters behind us because we're going the other way. We've got the opposing team ahead of us. Okay. We've got us and, and obviously and their supporters behind them and we've got our supporters down that end. That's right. Okay. Yes. And we've got the spirit from them. We've got the determination from them. 84, 85, 86, 87, 88, 89, 90. There's no extra time in elections. No extra time. 10 o'clock. June the 8th, polls close. Result next day, watch out for it. You're ready. You're I'm ready for the battle wages on. I'm ready. You're ready. I'm ready to go. Quickly, top four for next season. Give me top four for next season. Top four of next season. Well, of course, Arsenal will be oh, there. Jeremy, please, man. Arsenal. Don't lie to me about this. <laughs> I deserve more. Be strong, be strong. Be strong and believe. Come I think on. it's going to be Arsenal, Liverpool, Spurs, Chelsea. Shazar did say, is Corbin, Corbin going to make a fire track with JME? Are you in the studio with JME? No problem. We'll no problem. We'll do, no we can, problem. We can I mean, do look, it. Look, I like only it. if I'm allowed to mime. Only if you're allowed to mime. <laughs> and we also have a present here from uh, oh. Ruben Dango. This is you dabbing. Oh. Um, he's an artist. Obviously, grand for Corbin as well. And it's the 84th minute. You've heard it. You've got a couple of minutes left. But the army of supporters is there. <clears throat> 8th of June, vote for whoever you like, but you've heard it here from the man himself, Jeremy Corbyn. Absolute pleasure. Thank, Thank you so much, brother. Thanks. Have a great one. Thanks. Lovely to meet you.